Hello, my name is Michael Liang, and I'm one of your CS188 TAs. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about GIB sampling. Okay, let's get started. So in GIB sampling, we are given a query, P of S, given some evidence, plus R. And we want to estimate that given some samples. So first we have to obtain these samples. In GIB sampling, the first step you do is you fix your evidence. So in this case, our evidence is plus R, and so we're going to fix plus R. The next step is to initiate all the other variables, s, c, and w, and reinitiate them randomly. In the third step, there is two parts. First, you have to choose a non-evidence variable. Then you're going to resample based on the distribution of that variable, given all the other variables. Once you've resampled, you're going to choose another variable. In this case, you chose c. You're going to resample that based on this distribution. C, given all the other variables. Next, you're going to choose another non-evidence variable, W, and then you're going to resample based on this distribution, W, given all the other variables. And you keep doing this until you decide to stop. To get a sample from the conditional distribution specified in the query, you need to repeat the resampling step infinitely often. In practice, you end up repeating the resampling step a large number of times. After you resampled enough times, you get one Gibbs sample. If our large number of resampling steps was three resampling steps, then this would have been our Gibbs sample. Of course, in practice, we would not consider three to be a large number. We pick three in this example, just so it fits on the slide. If you want to obtain another Gibbs sample, you will need to repeat steps one, two, three again. Now we will go over in detail how to obtain one Gibbs sample. Okay, so in Gibbs sampling, we start with one sample that is consistent with the evidence. Okay, so we have this query, p of plus b given plus c. This is our evidence, and this is our query variable. So when we initialize, we just need to choose something that has plus c in it. So let's say arbitrarily, ideally we would sample to get this, but um, let's assume we sampled, and this is what we got. So this is the sample that we are starting with. The idea behind Gibbs sampling is you would repeat this process first by choosing a non-evidence variable and then resample it based on this distribution and that will get you a new sample. For this exercise, we are going to repeat this four times and whichever sample we get at the end will be our Gibbs sample. Let's say we randomly chose to resample D. We are going to resample based on this distribution, P of D given all the other variables. So right now the other variables is plus a, plus b, and plus c. So let's just calculate this probability. So we have the join at the top, and on the bottom is the sum. Since we have a base net, we can actually uh, decompose the top term into products. So p of a, p of plus a given its parents, p of plus b given its parents, plus a, P of plus C given its parents, plus A, and P of D given its parents. And on the bottom, we have a summation over D of the same term. So, not every term within the summation depends on D. For those terms, we can move it to the left. So those are P of plus A, P of plus B given plus A, and P of plus C given plus A. So moving those to the left, this is what we get. Turns out that all these terms cancel, and at the top we are left with P of D given plus B and plus C over the summation, which I'll write out as P of plus D given plus B and plus C and P of minus D given plus B and plus C. Now let's plug in numbers to actually figure out what the distribution is. So Let's say we are trying to find the probability of plus d given all the other variables. Let's say we're trying to find this, so we just plug numbers in. p of plus d given plus b and plus c, that is this entry here. On the bottom, this is the same term, 0 0.3. And here, minus d given plus b plus c, that's this entry right here, 0.7. Okay, and the other term, p of minus d given all the other variables is 0 0.7. Now we sample based on this distribution. 
we have two buckets. We have plus d and we have minus d. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sample 0.67. So that's going to fall into the minus d bucket. Our new sample now is plus a plus b plus c. And now we resample d and d is now minus d. So this is our new sample. Now we're going to repeat this process again. We're going to choose a random variable. Let's say we are going to choose b. So we are going to resample b. And to do that, we have to calculate this distribution, p of b, given all the other variables. And so we can re-express this as the join over the conditioned variables. So p of plus a, b, plus c, minus d. All that over just the conditioned variables. And on the bottom, this is a sum across b, p of plus a, b, plus c, and minus d. Expanding the top out, we get p of plus a given its parents, p of b given its parents plus a, p of plus c given its parents plus a, then we have p of minus d given its parents, <clears throat> b and plus c. And on the bottom, we have a summation across these terms. We can take out all the terms that do not have b in it. So this term does not have b, this term does not have b. So we can cancel these terms out. And we are left with p of b given plus a, p of minus d given b and plus c on the bottom. We have a summation that I'm going to expand. So everywhere I see b, I'm going to replace it with plus b for the first one. So p of plus b plus a and p of negative d plus b given plus b and plus c. And for the other term, I'm going to have it as negative b. All right, so now we have this distribution, right? We have each term here. Let's just plug it in. So let's say we're trying to find plus b given all the other variables. Okay, so um, we have p of plus b given plus a. So that is this term right here. So that's 0 0.8. And then here, negative d given plus b plus c. That's the term right here, 0 0.7. And then all that over. So these two terms are the same as the top two terms. And here, we just look up the table again. So minus b given plus a. That is right here. Then we have minus d given minus b and plus c. That is 0 0.8. Okay? So this simplifies to roughly 0 0.77. Okay, now that we have a probability distribution, we can now sample. If our random number is between 0 and 0 0.77, then we are going to choose plus b. Otherwise, we're going to choose minus b. Okay, so our random number is 0 0.37. That's going to fall into this bin. b would be plus b, okay? So our new sample is plus a, plus b, plus c, minus d. Notice nothing changed, but this still counts as resampling. All right, now that we have our new current sample, we are going to choose a random variable to resample. We randomly chosen to resample b again. Now we're going to have to calculate its probability and, and resample. So p of b given all the other variables. Uh, we already calculated this probability. We know that p of plus b given plus a plus c minus d is 0 0.77. And likewise, if it's minus b given all the other variables, it's 0 0.23. We have our random number 0 0.86. That's going to fall into this bin. That's going to be plus a minus b plus c and minus d. So this is our new current sample. All right, finally, let's do one more step. We're going to choose a random variable to resample. Let's say we choose to resample a, okay? So we have to calculate the probability with which we are resampling the probability of a given all the other variables. To calculate this, again, using this, taking the join, and then on the bottom, it's just the join of the given variables. We can express the top as products on the bottom is a sum of products on A. So we have a sum across A of P of A minus B plus C minus D. And the top remains the same. We can express the top as products. So, um, P of A given its parents. So that's just P of A. P of minus B given its parents. So minus B given A. P of plus C given A. And P of minus D given its parents. On the bottom, we have a summation across A of the same term. Okay. Now we can take out all the terms that do not have a in it, which is only this term. But when we take this, when we move this to the left side of this summation, we can cancel this out. And the bottom, I'm going to expand the bottom out. Okay, so now that we have this, we can now find, let's say, p of plus a, given all the other variables. So p of plus a, given minus b, plus c, minus d. Okay, so the top, p of plus a, that is 0.8. p of minus b, given plus a, that is here, 0 0.2. Then you have p of plus c given plus a, which is here, 0 0.7. All that is over. So these three terms are the same. Okay, and then you have p of negative a, which is 0.2. You have p of negative b given negative a, that's right here, so times 0.5. Okay, so if you plug this into a calculator, you get 0 
918. So now we know the distribution we're sampling from. There are two bins, plus A and negative A. So we sample 0.98, that is greater than 0.918, so that's going to go into this bin. And so we're going to have to choose negative A as our new resampled value for A. So our final sample is negative A, negative B, plus C, minus D. What we did was we repeated this step four times. We reassigned D in the first step, then we resampled B in the second step, we resampled it but B didn't change, then we resampled B again and it did change, and then we resampled A and A is now negative A. So this final result is one Gibbs sample. We repeat this whole process many times and then we'll end up with a bunch of Gibbs samples that is consistent with the evidence. And then you can answer queries such as this, that you have a bunch of samples and you just count the samples. So number of samples that are plus C, and then on the top you just have number of samples that are both plus C and plus B. And this is how you will estimate this probability. Okay, and that is all for Gibbs sampling.